right. I've got the Scorchio Quartet here. And, um, you know, we just wanted to talk about So She Howls. Um, this record came from a really personal um, hardship in my life um, when I was going through breast cancer. And um, I had a real hard time uh, just trying to to live with the fact that I might be uh, facing my own mortality. And, um, and I, I, I began writing as a way to heal and to help me get through um, this really difficult time. And, um, and hopefully um, when you listen to this record, it's also um, something that can help you get through um, whatever hardships you're going through. And, um, and yeah, and I was very, um, very lucky and honored to have the Scorchio Quartet uh, play on this album. And um, yeah, it, it just, um, I'm going to let Martha take it away and talk a little bit about Scorchio and, um, and how the project came to be. Oh, and yeah. there's James. James. <laughs> Hi, all. Uh, nice to see you, James. So, um, Wow, this is this has been such um, an um, an amazing experience. I mean, um, from the from from going into the into the studio. Well, I'll backtrack a little bit. I'm Martha Mook, by the way. I play the viola. Um, I am the founder of the uh, director of uh, Scorchio String Quartet, and. Um, uh, we play every year at the Tibet House Benefit concerts, and we've played with a few people you might have heard of, like David Bowie and and uh, Laurie Anderson and Lou Reed. But um, but I digress. <laughs> but I I met I met Carla. Um, we, we were doing a BMI screen scoring stage Film scoring, yeah. Scoring. Um, and we just hit it off, and um, and that was that was. BC before before COVID time. So what did we know was going to happen there? Um, and we stayed in touch. And the, you know sometimes things are meant to be, and they and they the process starts sort of gelling and um, and percolating, but you don't know what what's going to happen out of that. And now looking back, I can see that there was magic starting to happen there. Yeah. <laughs> And um, but let's before I before I delve into <clears throat> I tend to get very passionate about what I talk about. <laughs> and um, oh, we're getting some hits on. Uh, thanks, Mr. Elephant. Mr. Elephant. <laughs> hey, big waves. Hope you're, hope you're there. It's nice to see people. Um, let, let's go around and, and have everybody introduce themselves, and hopefully we'll. Um, Leah will get here in a few a few minutes. Um, so Lorenza, go ahead. Hi, I'm Lorenza Ponce. I play violin one in the Scorchio Quartet, um, and I am honored to do so. And um, I'm just thrilled that uh, we got to play on Carla's incredible record, and um, and that we're all here tonight. And with it, we're Grammy nominated. It's it's a thrill, and um, just kind of serendipitous and uh, I can't wait to see everybody in February. Yay. <laughs> You're on. I'm trying to get Leah Leah's in, but all I all I'm seeing is a yellow background. <laughs> uh oh. Tell her to read to tell her to uh, try to come in again. That's what happened to me. I just had to do it again. Okay. Good we'll get this. We'll get this. It's all you know, we're good. Go ahead. Yeah, maybe Frederica. Okay, hi, I'm Frederica Career. I'm playing violin too. I'm the newest member to Scorchia Quartet. Started playing with them 2020, I think, right at the start of the pandemic. And it's been a really great, great time with everyone. And um, I'm super excited to also be part of this amazing album. Yeah. Um. No, oh, tonality is on the on the line. Yes, tonality. <laughs> Woo, tonality. And Leah has joined us. Leah Koloff, our amazing cellist, and her cat. 
I love that. Yeah. Betty. So tell, uh, are we hearing you? Let's make sure we can hear you. Can yes. you hear me? Yeah. yeah just tell <laughs> Hi, Leah. About, about yourself. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Leo, so, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. I'm so sorry. Leah's been in school all day. <laughs> sorry, I don't know why. I, I have been. I've been in school all day, and I've been doing Max. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Max, the program Max. Um, yeah, I'm learning uh, Max, node-based programming. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm Leah, and I have been uh, the longtime cellist of Scorchio. Um, it's been a long, uh, fantastic ride. We've done so many uh, fun things over the years, and the most recent is uh, playing on Carla's album. Um, when was that? Was it June? It was we, June, we actually. I was just thinking about it. I thought it was April, and then I'm like, no, that was June. It was summer. <laughs> yeah. It was, it yeah, was summer. It was summer. Yeah, I remember. It was summer. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So that was a, a great day. It's really know, beautiful. It was really, magic um, in there. And, and um, we do have, we have some videos we're going to show because it, it's just... Being, being in the studio for those that, that maybe, don't, you know, are not as as familiar, there, there's a certain chemistry that happens, right? And and um, I'm gonna introduce James Frazee, who is, who is our engineer, and in, we were in his amazing studio. Um, and James, let me just introduce your, yourself and just talk about the studio a little bit and, and what happened there. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm James Frazee, I am a producer and engineer, and I was thrilled that Martha and Carla called me to record the strings for So She Howls, and um, and I'm, I'm, of course, thrilled about the Grammy nomination, and congratulations, Carla, very well-deserved. It's a beautiful, beautiful record. <laughs> um, and yeah no the studio is hobo sound it's in weehawken new jersey in the in the sst building and uh we love it it's me and stuart lerman and tony shanahan and david mansfield um and you know we've been making records there for maybe 12 years now which seems insane to say that we've actually been in that space for that long but uh but we have and we love it and yeah totally magical to be in the studio. And I think some of that um, is that you four are, are a quartet who play together. You rehearse together um, and you're used to playing with each other. And I've recorded a lot of string quartets and it's a very, very different experience when you get four people um, who are used to being an ensemble versus four hired guns. It kind of doesn't matter how, how good they are if they're not used to playing together as an ensemble there's like there's there's a period a, a, an amount of time that it takes for everybody to get used to each other and that didn't have to happen with the four you. well when when carla called me and 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 at first and was talking to me about this project and she's like i'm looking for you know a space that like a, a, a safe space or a, a space that has good vibe good energy and oh. Um, and, and I just knew that that was, that was the place that, but little did I know how much, how much of a vibe and how much of an energy was, was going to happen. Oh, right on. And, um, right on. thank you. And it was just a glorious, glorious day. And, um, I think Carla, maybe to, because the music is just so, I mean, I was listening to it before and every time I listen to it, I get deeper and deeper in and, as I, I posted earlier, um, when we were recording, um, I, I remember getting chills listening and in, in the process. And it wasn't because I just had shaved off all my hair. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I was listening to it again. And, and it's like, I know the music, I've played the music, I've recorded it, but it's fresh every time. I don't, I don't know how that that doesn't happen often yeah. um and i think this just because there's so much in it um 
and so much of you in there. And it's basically, it's almost a, um, a rebirth in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Carl, I feel like you just laid it all out. You I, I did. Didn't hold anything back with this record. It, it's really, yeah, it's been this like, you know, little by little, like I've taken steps to get to where I am now. And I think that's like from healing from the illness I had and like from, um, you know, just even being able to talk about it and express myself and, 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 and be able to even say, oh, I had breast cancer and not have like all this anxiety over me. So it's like helped me on this personal level, this entire project. <laughs> and so, you know, it, you know, it very much started from this place where I um, the only way that I could really express myself was through music. And so it was just it came down to the basics when you know when i began it and um and the howling the so she howls uh title actually came from me just being able like just howling basically like i i didn't have lyrics i just needed to get sounds out of my body you know and um and so you know and then you know that, that magical day of coming into the studio with you guys it's it was like the first time I sat down in a professional setting and explained to anybody that I had gone through this experience. And I just felt there was something you guys, each of you just really clicked in uh, with me. And I, I, I just felt this raw emotion coming out of each of you guys. <laughs> and, I, and, and I think I'll forever remember that session. It, it was just so, um, magical to hear someone else play the music you know uh that i had written and and just with and so much raw emotion as well so i mean i can't <laughs> thank you guys enough <laughs> i just say it was it was kind of amazing um not 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 just amazing it was very um meaningful um because it, we we played, I think we play on most, on most of the, all the tracks, but then some of us had some featured spots and solo. So I got to go in and sit in the control room. Um, I, I think it was maybe while Lorenzo was playing and just kind of watch you and you were sitting there just so enthralled in the, in the score when it's a beautiful score, by the way, and you're, you know, you're a film composer and, and it looks like a film score. <laughs> And, and it really, it sounds like a film score, but just to kind of watch you and then, you know, peek in and see what was going on in the, in the, in the live room. Um, yeah, it was really, really a treat. Um, yeah. um, you know, I'm thinking, should, should we maybe see a little bit of the, cause you made a video of some of the, yeah. of some of what happened in the session and, and then maybe we can talk about that. Yeah, I think the video starts from me in the studio here, just kind of starting singing and getting some of those raw tracks, and then it goes into uh, the session out in New York. Okay, let's let's see if I can make this happen. <clears throat>
Wow. Woo! <laughs> that, that, um, <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say, like, Lorenza saved the day on that song because it was actually, you know, I feel like on every album there's a song that I'm like, oh, I don't know about that song. I might cut it. I'm like, I'll go in the studio. Let's see what happens. And, um, and, and I was like, should I put flute here? Or what should I do with this song? I don't know. And, um, and I said, Lorenza, can you get lost in the forest? <laughs> I, let me tell you, she, Carla, I was a perfect person to do that track <laughs> for several reasons. I, first of all, I'm a tree person. Yeah. So forest, trees, I'm there. But also, that track spoke to me. When I heard the demo of it, it just spoke to me. And, you know, I've always, it wasn't hard for me to find the emotion to go with it because it was, it's a track that to me related to kind of fear, to wandering, to wondering, you know, and that's been my whole life. You know, life is about fear, traveling day to day through life choosing the things that scare you because they're the good things they're the things that are going to change your life but you don't want to do it but you know you have to go there and so that's you know walking through a forest is really you know that track to me was me walking through my life you know and so i just i it just really spoke to me and i just loved playing on that track it was it was good for me too. It just, I, I was able to just sort of put myself into it because it was truly how I felt, feel about my life and that track. We just connected. It was, it was just so powerful. And, you know, there was a lot of uh, time changes in that track too. And so I, I was like, what did I do? You know, it's like, <laughs> but you know, and, I wanted it. Really rhythms feel. with the guitar polyrhythms yeah. with the guitar and that were like against the chime changes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was, but you like got it in like a take. So it was just like, you know, it was just amazing. And I was, I was just like blown away from it from the beginning. And, and then, you know, we were talking about me being in the, in the, in the room with James and something that really made me feel at home. I mean, James, you're such a, a sweet person and warm person. Um, but then I, we soon discovered that you were from Longmeadow, right? Longmeadow, Mass. Yeah, that's right. Grew up in Western Mass. Which is like my neck of the woods. And yeah. so I really feel like that also added like, you know, we were both mass holes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Forever and ever. <laughs> and it was really cool. Like to, you know, I think it was really great, you know, working with you and having you also, you know, besides doing all like the the sounds and you know making sure the mics and everything were sounding good also just like picking up on you know just all the subtleties that really helped me so excellent um, yeah excellent it was a pleasure yeah um, i also i just want to point out that james is not only a, a magical engineer and producer but he built these sound <laughs> oh he did it's right? true. Yeah, I built those for Martha. Yeah. That's right. I mean, I built all all this stuff. It's yeah. Very cool. <laughs> and and I have a table. I bought a table. Oh yeah. <laughs> How's that table doing, Martha? Oh, it's great. It's perfect. It is. Yeah. I've, it, right up your alley. Yeah. So, um, what else? I would anybody. I have a question. I have a question for Carla. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Yeah, I, yeah. So what was it that made you start writing? I mean, I know it was your illness, but what was it? What was the first thing you wrote? What was it that you, when you said, I have to put this down? And what was it that what was the catalyst besides your illness? But after that, you said, I have to get this out. So what what was the first thing you did to start writing this record? Well, yeah, like I think I just had all these emotions built up from like a couple months of like unknowns, right? And so I was just, I felt like I had all these raw emotions and I, I, I don't really journals, my journaling is music. So 
I, you know, that's what kind of started it. But, um, but yeah, like I think too, like I was like thinking about the fact that, oh, I'm never going to make another album. Like I already was like in this out mindset of like, well, I don't know if I'm going to go on to do other, all these things that I've dreamt of doing, you know, and, um, and it kind of like became this thing of, well, this is going to be my last record if I finish it. Um, and so it just kind of, then it kind of shifted as I was like, you know, all of a sudden <clears throat> given like a great diagnosis after I went through treatment, um, it started shifting like, you know, oh, this is like, um, this is how I can get my momentum back. Like I, I'm going to finish this album. Like I just want to finish it, you know? And so it was just like at the same time, I'm like doing like, you know, working out again and like doing all these things. So it just, it became, became like a part of the whole process. Like I'm, I'm getting my, my voice back, you know? Um, and you know, and that's it, it was it was very linked with with that, um, and it, and it's also just you know, it shifted again when I got to the other side of it, you know. And on the album, that's around um, uh, without noise, <laughs> and it's like it starts to shift there, and it's like you know, I can get to the other side of this, and. And so I just kind of, you know, went with that momentum and, um, and, you know, the, the only like little thing at the end was like, you know, I wasn't sure if I could soar quite yet. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but like, I was just trying to like, you know, that's why I finally added words to the last piece. I'm like, oh, I can sing again, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, where that, and I think also, I was able to go back and remember everything that happened and without the anxiety following me. And um, so it's just this, yeah, it is like a rebirth. I think you were saying that James too. So um, yeah. And it, I think, you know, I always albums like capture a moment, right. Or they mm -hmm. capture these moments. And I think this is what this album does. It captures this, uh, this whole journey. Yeah. Did, did you did you or or were you tempted to circle back to compositions you wrote while in a particular place or state of mind? Like I from, was a, from a compositional point of view, yeah. like did you go? I would I'd change that now. And did you or didn't you? I was tempted. I was tempted because well, I did do a different arrangement to the track "So She Howls," mm -hmm. the the self title track, and. And, you know, and I, there was something about it that I, you know, I did like a more orchestrated, a bigger, like full orchestra version of it. And I was like, there's something that, and then I, I just ended up stripping it away, which I find myself yeah. doing all the time, just going mute, mute, mute. And I'm like, oh, there's the, there's the, the juice. <laughs> there's the, <laughs> the real yeah. stuff there. And, and I was like, no, this needs to be much more intimate. And yeah. so I, I really was like this needs to be intimate and and um and then i started to like re like imagine it that way yeah awesome what was the first yeah. track you wrote for this record so she howls was okay yeah there yeah that that like it just poured out of me and um and yeah and i just you know those vocals i sang i i was tempted to re cut those vocals but i didn't i left them those so were the vocals so glad yeah those are the original like as i'm you know going through them and i'm like you know i want to embrace the flaws in this you know like i just want to like i just want it to be true to the time um and so and i i think going in with that mindset of you know i'm when I was a kid, I used to record my grandmother. She used to tell me to record her singing. And she always used to be, she, you know, it's Italian grandmother. She always used to be like, when I die someday, you're going to have this recording of me and I'm leaving it for you and you can hear me sing these songs. And, and so I, I, I think that like was in my mind, like, yeah, like this is like me, like at this moment and what I'm going to leave behind. 
Wow. That's deep. Beautiful. That's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it may, I'm like wondering now, like, you know, as I go through, I'm like an, you know, especially with film scoring, I start editing like crazy and I'm like, oh, just really embracing the imperfections, you know? <laughs> <Now>. <laughs> Like that was a beautiful phone ring. Like, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> let's embrace that. <laughs> no, that's that's wonderful. It's I, I think especially in the digital digital recording world, it's very, very tempting to make everything put you know what I mean? Like really correct yeah. everything. And um you can end up with something that is technically perfect but incredibly boring mm -hmm. right. um, and and lifeless and you know it doesn't have that uh that certain thing that that slight imperfections give um to a recording um I, there are some uh comments and and questions so um let's see do scorchio or carla have any performances coming up um, I'm going to tell you this, it's coming up in a few months, but you can catch us again at Carnegie Hall at the Tibet House Benefit Concert. Um, I believe the date is February 26th. It's a Monday. So come and see us there. Um, it's on a, they haven't announced it yet, but I have a feeling we're going to be there. Let's just say, um, I don't know, Carla, do you have something else going on? I actually don't perform much uh, live these days. I just played at the Hotel Cafe this week, but um, I could see stuff. I'm getting into the groove of it again. So I, uh, I'm hoping to come out to New York maybe and do a show out there, uh, maybe in February or March. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, what are you studying in school, Leah? <laughs> no. uh, yes. Um, I, I'm in an interesting program. It's called PIMA, uh, which is Performance and Integrated Media Arts. So at Brooklyn College. So it's, um, it's a little bit, it, it's an MFA program. Um, and it's multidisciplinary. So it's a group of, there's actors and musicians and, uh, are there any dance? There's some dancers. So it's it's uh, all kinds of artists coming together and creating performance. Yeah, so it's a performance degree. Very cool. But it's multidisciplinary, which is kind of the direction I've been going. Yeah. And you're also a singing cellist. You have a beautiful voice. Yeah. I am a singing cellist. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't. It's funny because I haven't been doing a lot of that, which is very odd. But um, but yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. Just well, you and you got called when when yeah. um, when we we played that concert with Trey Anastasio a number of years ago. You did both, right? You sang backup and played cello. I remember that was at Prince. Yeah, there's. Yeah, that was really fun. There's some there's some video of that. Yeah, which is great. Um, yeah, and I actually just uh, decided that I'm going to do um, the. Uh, um, Edinburgh Fringe Festival uh, in August. I have a show that is stories and songs playing oh, and singing fabulous. that uh, that I'm going to do. That's there. great. That's great. Yeah. Leah. Wow. Yeah. That's a very very famous yeah. Yeah. thing to go to. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about it. I was like, you know what? I think it would be good there, yeah, so I'm going to do it. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to do it in New York as well before I go. But uh, so I'll let you all know. Right on. Yeah. Probably March. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Carl, so another question. Carla, I know you said you were howling, thus the title. However, do you feel any connection with wolves at all? <laughs> <laughs> Love that. That's great. <laughs> I mean, I think. I think like, you know, when I think of it as like this raw, like sound that's coming out of, you know, coming out of me, like, yeah, you know, I mean, the howling, you know, kind of shifts from like this really dark howling on the album and, you know, transitions to like, 
the vowel will start to open up as we go through it. And once we get to remember, we are in the ah uh, space and then finally to the lyrical content. But um, but yeah, I mean, just thinking of these raw sounds trying to come out of my body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another question. Were there any moments during the recording process that were funny or uplifting as a group? The whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing was uplifting. Yeah. Well, we had the whole range of emotions, I think. Yeah, in the we did. I, I, I do remember when we did without noise. I well, at least like in the in the in the room, because that that one's really got a tricky part. Everybody's kind of playing opposite rhythms off each other. And I went in there, like, I remember when it started, I'm like, man, I'm such a jerk. Why did I write like all these like <laughs> rhythms like that were like, you know, why did I do this? And then, but then it like, you guys like played it and you played it perfectly. And then at the end, I was just like, did we just get through that? <laughs> I thought that was pretty fun to to you know to have that moment of like wow they just did it all right this monster of a creation I made all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah but there was a lot of energy like I felt like you know there were a lot of highs and you know and I just felt like there was these delicate moments that I feel you guys really tapped into. Like on, Re on We Remember, I felt like that was just this really, it w you know, the thing that I was like so blown away by is like, like a song like We Remember, it's a very simple part, right? And it's just a lot of whole notes. And But the emotion that you put behind that with a minimal notes was pretty amazing and really moved me in the session. Um, so I, I, I love that, you know, and I think as a composer, like when I think about a lot of times in film scores too, where I don't have a lot of notes and just being able to have that motion come through and feeling come through um, with a minimal thing going on is pretty magical. Yeah. You, you know, I, yeah. Think, I think also, I think the reason that that works because we are quartet. And we've played together yeah. so much and we like each other and we've had dinner together. We've partied together. We've, you know, we've, <laughs> we've learned music together. We've panicked together, you know, <laughs> and, and we've been tired together. So, so I think that when we got in that room with all this incredible music, I mean, we all love each other. So we were just, we were just like friends playing this music. You know, and of course we're going to feel something because it's not like, who is this person next to me? I have no idea who this person is. And they're not really playing exactly in tune with me and they need to lower themselves a little. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we know each other. So, so we, we just, I, I think that's why we were a, able to interpret this music as well as we were and really feel something because we like each other yeah. and we're used to playing together. And we listen Oh, yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that the most important thing about making music is, is the listening part. Mm -hmm. um, because you can, you can make all the sounds you want, but it, it, it's not communicating until you have that, that two way pipeline going on. And I think that we've, we've um, really, you know, made that a priority and listening, not just what we're playing, but listening to what the people around us are, we're playing as an ensemble, as a group, as what's, what we're hearing in the headphones and, and how we fit in. It's really much more multidimensional, I think, than, than people get when, you know, you think that music is those little black notes on the page, especially those of us that have been, um, taught, you know, in, in the traditional Western, uh, you know, Mozart, Beethoven, they're all great. But there's so much more to it than, than that. It's bringing those little black notes to life. And sometimes the, the little notes are not there at all. And, um, and that's where that's the where the magic is. 
So, um, uh, another question, is everyone going to the Grammys in February? We are planning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, James, if you're- I'm you're not. Uh, My suit's still at the dry cleaners, so yeah. I, I don't have anything to wear. Yeah. Um, no, I no, I'm not. I won't be going. I have so, I've, the, the family stuff is, you know, you have yeah. three kids. You can't, yeah. hard to leave for that long. It is. Yeah. yeah. Well, you will, you will be with us because you. Yeah. Well, and they're, you know, very exciting. I'll be crossing my fingers. Yeah. We will have to zoom you in or something or. Yeah. My, right my family does that at Thanksgiving or if I can't make a holiday, they take their iPad out and put me at the table. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do that with you. Yeah. Love it. Please. You know, I, I want to point out also that um, so we, we're performers and, and, and composers, um, and oftentimes the, um, the, the folks behind on the other side of the, of the board don't get the acknowledgement. Um, and really, this record doesn't do what it's doing if it didn't sound good. Yes. And if it had the attention to the quality of, of sound and each of us as individuals and what it takes to put us together as an ensemble. So um, Maestro James, we owe you a deep, a deep thank you for. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's true. Making it's us true. sound good. Well, if you didn't have uh, lights just where they need to be, you wouldn't have been able to hear those strings and all that emotion coming out if you didn't put those mics in the right place. And that is Yeah, me, you know, um, I'm tempted to kind of put it. I I I feel the same about y'all, and and really music in general. I've I've recorded a lot of music uh, in studios and in particular in that room, and uh, the thing that I realize over and over again is that um, microphones don't matter. Um, it really, really is. Uh, it's about the musicians. Um, and really the musicians, I mean, you can, you, you know, uh, you, you put a mediocre musician on an amazing instrument in front of an amazing microphone and it's still not gonna sound great. Um, you, you flip that around and put an amazing musician on a mediocre instrument on a bad microphone and it's gonna convey uh, that emotion that everybody was talking about. But um, but yeah, thank you. I think it came out great. I'm really happy with it. But I <laughs> but I always I always feel like a genius when I'm recording great musicians, <laughs> and I always feel like a hack uh, when I'm not. So I've you know over a couple decades, I've realized that it's you know um, it, it's about caring and it's about attention to detail and being present in the moment and you know seeing what what the session needs uh and all of that but um it's about you guys yeah no well, mutual admiration society. yeah yeah that's that's right um i think in you know and everybody's got such busy schedules as end of year it's end of semester some of us are professors and some of us are students and some of us are i mean it's the holiday season it's our busy it's our busy time so i want to be mindful of that um and but I I think we'd love to do this again at another at another time. Um, now that I've sort of figured out how to put things in the right place, and I, I think um, um, I think that would that would be a lot of fun. And in meanwhile, I think um, Carla, how how can people actually um, listen? Because because I you know some of the folks have already listened to the album, but how? How can they just listen and know what we're talking about? I mean, I I definitely, you know, and not to sound uh, like snobby about it, but <laughs> I do think like, give yourself the 35 minutes to get through the album from start to finish. Cause I think that's the way that you need to really process it. And, um, you know, I've, always like I love listening listening to certain music at night and I think this fits into that 
place because it can really bring you down or like wind you down into a calm place, I think. And I, you know, or if you're going through something stressful and you've got like 30 minutes to just breathe, I think it'll help you do that. Um, so, um, of course, it's on all platforms, but if you go to Apple or Tidal, um, it is mixed um, in Dolby Atmos there, so you can experience it that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then also, I actually made some vinyl, so um, so <laughs> there are some vinyl versions too, if you want um, another layer of static sound added to it. <laughs> Um, which actually I think works with this album, you know, that's, I was like, this would be a good album to have for vinyl. So, um, but anyways, yeah, I think, you know, finding that 35 minutes to listen to it is probably the best way. Yeah. Yeah. I have it. I have it when I need to just be focused. Yeah. I call it up. Um, Anyway, I mean, this is this is just so, such a blast. I'd like I'd love to do this every night. So, yeah. um, <laughs> but let's figure out when we can when we can play together and play it live. Cause yeah, I think that would that would really be something special. Um, but I don't know any in closing closing thoughts for for this evening or um, thank you. Thanks everybody for for being yeah. here. Thanks everybody. Yeah. For thanks for being here. Miss you yeah. guys. Want to see you guys. Miss you guys too. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone in February. Yeah. And uh, my gosh, thanks to all the people who have been like so supportive. Um, that like to me has really been mind blowing. Um, so, you know, even I know everyone's busy and they've made it tonight. Everyone who could come out tonight on, and give us their last bit of energy left of the day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. And let's do this again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Everybody stay, stay well, stay healthy, have a wonderful holiday season. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, just send out the love to everybody, the love and the, and the light and um that's what it's about so thank you so much carla for bringing us all together yes, yeah carla. Thank you, carla. and um thank you. and it's just it's just such a such a dream to yeah. be on this ride together so yeah yeah all right thanks everybody if uh, anybody has right. any any questions or anything just leave us some some comments and we'll get back to you and and um it's a joy thanks Bye. 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 Bye.